Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Julie Peasgood. I'm an actress, TV presenter and writer and I am delighted to be your host for this evening's Our Time live coaching session. Over the next hour, we're going to look at three main topics, three different chapters, if you like. The first is about the importance of photos for your online dating. The second is how to write a really, really winning profile. And the third is all about messaging and meeting up. But first of all, let me introduce you to the amazing Kate Taylor. Now, Kate has been uh, our Times relationship expert for the past 16 years, helping people really improve and maximize their online dating success. Kate is a huge fan of online dating, uh, having met both her husbands online, the first in 1999 and the second in 2009. Uh, she also writes uh, for a host of newspapers and magazines. She has no less than five books to her name, including Not Tonight, Mr. Wright, published by Penguin. Welcome, Kate. It's so exciting to be here. And can I just say to everyone who signed up for this live event that I am delighted that you're taking such a positive step towards finding the love of your life. And if you have any questions during this event, please feel free to ask me and I'll try and answer as many of those as I can. Absolutely. And on the subject of questions, just keep them in all through the live event. Interact with us through your chat box. You can also click on the emojis if you like, especially if you like something. We'd love that. Um, and uh, and last but not least. Um, oh, yes. If your uh, screen should accidentally freeze, all you've got to do is simply click on the refresh button. OK, uh, but now it's time for our first chapter. Okay, and as our first topic is how to choose the best photos for your profile, our first poll question is, do you think online dating photos should be flattering or realistic? I'll ask that again. In your opinion, should online dating photographs be flattering or realistic? Kate, why is it so important to make sure that your photograph is as good as possible? Well, any form of dating is very much a visual experience. Like, I don't know anyone who's ever spotted someone's sense of humour across a crowded room. <laughs> and we're, we're looking to attract people. We're looking to attract people for a romantic relationship. So the element of physical attraction is always going to be important. Now, I don't want you to think that you have to be perfect. I just want you to know the right types of photos to attract the attention and to know how much weight to give them when you're building your profile. And I would say spend 80% of your time choosing the right kind of photos from the ones that we talk about. And then only spend 20% of the time actually writing the text because your photos are gonna be what sells you to somebody else. Very good, okay. Um, we've got a question actually for you now uh, that's come from Gerard. What pictures work best for the 60 plus woman who isn't a model? So we're gonna talk about what photos work best for the 60 plus woman who isn't a model, but mm -hmm. also it's gonna be the same types of photos that work best for the 20 something who could be a model because we know the type of photos that are gonna sell you in the best way. But please be aware that nobody feels that nobody feels they're gorgeous enough when it comes to choosing their online dating profiles. If you're single, the chances are your confidence is quite low anyway. And it's going to be a rare person who starts scrolling through photos of themselves and thinks, I, I can't believe I'm on my own because look, I'm magnificent. <laughs> so it's all going to be about confidence. I don't want you trying to attract everybody you're not trying to have a photo up that literally half the people in the world are going to fall in love with you you're you just not you only need to attract one person there are over 500,000 members on our time at the moment so seriously you are going to need to screen some of them out you're just saving yourself some time so just concentrate on doing the photos that we know work that will help you attract that one person who's right for you Great, great answer. Um, we've got a question actually that's just popped in, Kate, um, from one of our, our live viewers, um, Sarah. Sarah's got an interesting one. She says, do you have to use a photo? You have to use a photo, Sarah. I know, I know. Mm -hmm. um, you do have to use a photo because think about how you're going to be when you're using 
our time dating site. If you see a man who hasn't got a photo, I'm sure you're going to be slightly suspicious about why isn't he using a photo? Could, is he in a relationship? Is he is he trying to hide something? Who is this mystery man? And it's not attractive. Also, don't uh, don't try and get away with not using a profile because you're trying to hide the fact that you're single and looking for love. Because really, being single and looking for love is something that you want other people to know. Because mm. if you put a profile up and it's you looking lovely on your online dating profile and someone that you know sees it, they're going to think, oh, Sarah's single. I had no idea Sarah was single and looking for love. Oh, Sarah would be like perfect for my brother. I have to introduce them. And all of a sudden your dating network is getting bigger. So please don't panic about the photos, but you do need to have a photo. Yeah. Good point. Okay. Got a question for you, Kate, from another Kate, actually, uh, who's 59. And she says, I don't like my appearance at all at the moment. As RuPaul says, if you don't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love someone else? Do I put myself out there knowing that I am not the best I can be? Yes, but as long as you don't let your kind of negative view of yourself as you are at the moment mean that you start accepting treatment from people that isn't good enough for you. So just make sure that your boundaries are still in place. You are still awesome. Even if you wish that you'd fixed your teeth or you don't like your hair at the moment or you really want to lose a little bit of weight, you're still lovely just as you are. But also see online dating as a way that you can boost your confidence because every step in creating your profile is a really positive step that you can take. So like when you start having photos taken or choosing photos of yourself, you you get a chance to to look at yourself and think, you know, that photo really that photo really works well for me, or I really enjoyed the day that that photo was taken, and you can feel your mood start to become more optimistic. Then you'll start choosing clothes to wear on a date or you'll start getting compliments from people through the messages. And it's these tiny little building blocks of positivity. So over time, it will boost your confidence. So please don't wait because I want you to start boosting your confidence through the process now. Great. So baby steps towards building baby confidence steps. almost. Fantastic. OK, um, what photos should people use on their profile? What kind of photos? So through research, we know that there are three main types of photos that you need to use on your profile to maximize your chances of getting the most messages from people who are interested in a relationship with someone like you. OK, so you need to use one of each of these three types. So the first one you need is a clear headshot. You'll know through browsing the Our Time website that the first thing you see of anyone is their headshot picture. It's the one that you see when you're sort of swiping left and right. It's mm. the one that you see on someone's profile. It's the main one. So I want you to get this right. We know that men's photos work really well when they're black and white. Women's photos, however, need to be really colorful. It's like men are bees and they're drawn towards the color in your photos. So women, I'd like you to wear a colorful top and be standing against a kind of colorful background, something that's gonna help you stand out on the website. And I want you to be doing a kind of flirtatious face looking directly into the camera. Selfies work really well for women. So do some selfies of you in your favorite top against a colorful wall, doing a little flirty face and try those out. Men is kind of the opposite. So like I said, black and white photos for you, but brooding pictures of you looking away from the lens seem to look, seem to work really well for men. So try, try one of those. I get like, if you can try a photo and if nothing happens for a week, get a new photo up there, kind of use it like a marketing exercise just to see. Um, but men selfies don't work well for you, unfortunately. I think it's, if, if the other women are anything like me, it's because we're kind of judging you for taking a selfie thinking, are you really vain or do you literally have no friends that could have taken a photo <laughs> for you? So men don't use selfies. Okay. Um, the next one you need, the next photo you need strikes fear into the heart of everyone who hasn't spent the last decade in the gym because it's a full length photo. You need to have a full length photo. This photo does a lot of the dating work for you. So I don't want you to skip it. You can't get away with just a headshot or you can't get away with just every photo ends at your shoulders if you're trying to hide something like you don't feel that you're in the best shape at the moment because that is a very short-term dating strategy people need to know who's going to be turning up to that first date and people who aren't attracted to someone who looks like you 
is a good thing. Like I said, a lot of this is about weeding people out as well as attracting the right ones in. So have mm. a full length photo of you as you are today, dress in the kind of clothes that you would wear on a first date, you know, sort of smart casual. It's also a place where you can show a lot of information. Like if you're in a wheelchair, make this photo show you in the wheelchair and someone who's not looking to care for someone at the moment, they won't contact you, which is good, which means they won't waste any of your time. And the people that are, are more kind of respectful for that kind of situation, mm -hmm. they will contact you. So make that photo really show you as you are now. So people have no surprises. People don't like surprises when it comes to dating. And the third one is the fun one. This is a, the icebreaker photo. So this is a photo of you engaged in an interesting activity. So Julie, with all your TV work, is like a photo of you kind of behind the scenes on the TV set would be amazing, kind of like so yeah. interesting. And it would make people very easily have a hundred questions that they could ask you in that first message like oh my god where was this or hang on is this the Hollyoaks set like where where are you it's really <laughs> interesting and fascinating so if you've done something interesting put that photo on this photo doesn't have to be the most recent your headshot has to be recent and your full length shot has to be recent but if you've done something really interesting that it was 10 years ago I would still use this as long as the rest of your photos show you as you are now. So if you've jumped out of a plane, use that photo. If you play poker, use that photo. If you sing in a band, use that photo. Make it easy for people to break the ice and contact you. Fantastic. My friend's got a photo of, of herself galloping on a horse through perfect. the sea. And it's just perfect, Brilliant. exactly. So it's really great. good. Um, what's, what are your thoughts, Kate, on, on people having professional photos taken? There are loads of options now for getting professional dating photos taken. There are agencies these days that specialise in online dating photos. So they're not like the boring corporate headshots that you might use on LinkedIn or on your work website. You know, they're kind of lovely, relaxed, really good dating photos. So if you if you lack confidence in your photographic abilities or you don't know someone who could take a photo for you, then that is certainly something that you can do quite easily now. But what I would say is, to be honest, smartphones these days are so good. The cameras on smartphones are perfectly, perfectly adequate. So I would probably be more likely to advise you to take some selfies if you're female, get some, get a friend to take photos of you if you're a man, and build your own photos and then see, see. And if, if nothing's happening within three months, then maybe consider professional photos later on. Okay, though, good. Um, what what photos should people definitely not use on their profiles? So research has found that certain photos really put people off, and we kind of we don't know why because some of these are seem very innocent. But I wanted to share the list with you just to make sure you don't accidentally include one of these on your profile, and you know let the love of your life slip through your fingers. Mm -hmm. So. Don't use a photo of you involving drinks. So you holding a glass of wine in the garden or a cocktail on holiday, no, sorry. <laughs> For some reason, boozy photos score really badly. I don't know if it hints at a wild life of alcoholism, I don't know, but don't have a photo of you holding a drink. Don't use old or misleading photos. Like I say, very short-term dating strategy. So make your photos, the, your headshot and your, re and your full length picture, make those within the last year maximum. Ideally within the last six months, because you don't want to use a seasonal photo that makes your whole profile look outdated. So at this time of the year in the summer, I wouldn't use any Christmassy photos, for example, because it just looks it looks old. You look like the last turkey in the freezer on Christmas Eve, so don't. Um, men, please don't feel you need to stand in front of your car, motorbike, or <laughs> massive house. It doesn't impress us in the way that you want it to. And also, and also don't... <laughs> <laughs> and also meant like just be really careful in the background of your picture because you have you have never seen detective skills like a woman looking at a man's online dating profile picture we go into forensic mode and we will zoom in on the books on your bookcase and on the carpet <laughs> like does he hoover so be very careful in the background in general um don't crop people out of your pictures because again forensic mode we can tell so any picture of you where you've got like a mystery hand on your shoulder or a fuzzy line or i've seen some awful ones where it's someone is just savagely just colored in someone's face in black standing next to them 
you're, you're painting a sad picture of a very recent mm. breakup. So avoid those pictures. Um, don't use flash photography. If you use flash photography, it's meant to add seven years to your face. And oh. I personally feel like this face can't take an extra seven minutes. So use daytime pictures. Three o'clock in the afternoon is meant to be the most flattering time. Okay. Oh, and last thing, group photos. Avoid the group photos because everyone's busy when they're online dating and they're like going through those profiles like there's no tomorrow and no one has the time to work out which one is you in a group picture and will just assume that you're the worst looking person in that profile. So oh, avoid that. Avoid that. Can I add just a couple of, of personal points to that list, Kate, as well? Just something I've noticed. Um, the first is don't take your photograph when you're in shadow or don't allow yourself to be in shadow. It's it's amazing that there are quite a few and, and you just can't discern somebody's features. And that's frustrating. So make sure it's sort of like about about looking like this, a bit of space above the head, down to there and well lit. Um, and that leads me to the other point, actually. I know you've got to have a full length photo, but sometimes that's the first one that appears. And that's frustrating when you can't mm. make out again yeah, somebody's face. features. You know, equally, conversely, don't loom into the into the oh, camera too no, no, much. No, no. Up too up close and personal can be a little yeah. bit, you know, a little bit off putting. Just wanted yeah, to sort of add that. Yes, completely. And also um, sunglasses pictures. So don't have too shady a, a ah. picture, but don't be wearing your sunglasses or your stylish Panama hat because, you know, they might be lovely when you turn up on a date, but you're going to need to take those off. We wonder what you're hiding when you don't show your face. So let your lovely face be seen. Great. OK, we have now got the result of our first poll uh, in which we asked you, do you think online dating photos should be flattering or realistic? And 99 percent of you answered flattering. Yes. What do you think about that, Kate? <laughs> love this. Love this response, because you're right. The, the photo has to be it, well. It has to be realistically flattering. So as long as you're within the same kind of, as long as it's taken within the last year and you still have the same amount of hair, teeth, you're still the same <laughs> weight and everything, then do use, as long as it's truthful, use the most flattering picture that you can because people are judging you initially on your looks and you are up against other people in the same area as you. You know, there's a, there's a slight element of competition. So do, yeah, use the nicest photo that you have to sell yourself in the best possible way. Yes. Great, why not? Okay, uh, now before we move on to our next topic, uh, we've got another question that's just popped in. This is from Steve, okay? Um, it's sort of a question stroke comment. Steve says, most women judge the photos and not the bio. It's very difficult if you're not handsome. The rejection rate is very high, which in turn knocks your confidence. Very true. I would say that Steve is probably just accidentally using slightly unflattering pictures because mm -hmm. it's, it sounds to me like Steve is someone who prides himself on his thoughtfulness, his consideration. He's taken time to write a lovely profile and he feels that that's all being overlooked as shallow women judge him on his physical appearance, which yeah. I, I get it, Steve, you're right. You need to make sure though that those photos are selling you in the best possible way. You can't get away with just using any photo that you have on your computer and, and expecting people to take the time to, to seek out the inner beauty in you. You do have to make it very obvious for people to, to know that they're going to fancy you. You just have to make it as easy as possible. So get a friend of the, the type of person that you would like to attract, like, you know, a lovely platonic friend. Show them your profile and the photos and get their opinion of it, because it sounds to me like you need a second opinion. And just make sure that, that the photos are showing the real you, because yes, you want someone who loves you for your mind, but initially you are going to be judged on your body a slight amount. So just make sure that those photos are showing you as much as you can, and then that one person who's right for you will love you for everything. Fantastic. Thank you, Kate. Thanks, Steve. Do keep your questions coming in through the chat box. But now it's time for chapter two. <laughs> 